here's the actual main saw and kind of what we'd have to do to take the blades on and off those wheels big wheels will uh, travel up and down to put tension on the saw it shouldn't wave around like that when it's tight this would be the pit that we uh, open up and we use a uh, pulley and wheel system to take the blades on and off welcome to iDrone travel today we're going to show you the life of a saw filer uh, these are the blades they take quite a, a lot of abuse uh, high temperature cracking and there's a lot to them but we're going to give you a little uh, insight into what kind of goes on through the whole process so here we go my, my filer trained me to wear gloves to wear you're safe but yet you can grab it because you got to be able to sometimes just feel if there's lumps cracks you know just you can feel anything out of there so, we thought touch on the blade was kind of important, but you don't want to rub your hands on it all the time because of the oils. It'll make the blade rust. Normally we do this with the lights off. It makes it a little easier for me. But for today's purposes, I'm working with it. Checking the back. This is a gauge checker for the back. You've got to have around, uh, according to this gauge, around 15. You want to try and keep it as consistent as you can through here so it doesn't oscillate as it's going around the wheels. It's annoying. <laughs> it doesn't help the cutting either. And sometimes the blades get a twist on them and you got to get it out. And that's what I'm working on here today. This blade's got a little bit of a twist in it, it's been oscillating on the wheel. So I'm taking some time to go through it in sections and get it all kind of even again, consistent. As you can see, from all my marks on here, I've been working it in different areas, different spots, but we're almost to the finish line. That's the butt weld where uh, some very good craftsmen will Weld that together and it's almost flawless. They're fantastic at it. See, that's what I'm looking for. That little bit of nice little light through there. And we're getting really close to being good. That's looking really nice. Now that I'm happy with that, I'll go back. You check the back. Because as you add tension to it, you'll draw back out of it. And then you have to, you kind of chase your tail a lot. Yeah, I'm looking here. And it's gauging the curvature of this back side a little bit, and that's reading 10, but I need to get it up to 15. So I'll go back here a little ways, see where it starts to lose it, mark it, roll it a couple more times. Yeah, I've lost it all the way back to here by putting tension in.
Now, uh, this is just my markers to where I know I'm going to start and stop at for now. And what I'm doing here, this is the important thing, to put back into your saw, you come here and work this in and get that curve up a little bit. There's my mark, everything lined up. Lever. Stop that the mark. It's one of those give and take things. Now I went from having a, like an eight or a nine for a back to like I'm a 12 or a 13. So anywhere around 15, if you're within three numbers of it, I'm looking pretty good. So I think I'm gonna move on with that section. Actually, I need to check my tension again. Again, there's a lot of chasing your tail sometimes. Try to get a trainee in here, but I've been keeping up. Some mills will have a guy that exclusively does the bench work. And one guy will do the grinding work, but they'll have an idea of how to do the other just in case one is gone, you know, that day or for a week or whatnot.
It's a constant battle. These blades take a lot of abuse through an eight hour day. Sometimes a 10 hour if you're really lucky. Well, if working little sections like this, the next section won't have the same amount of tension or whatnot, so you can get kind of lumpy and twisty. I'll have to go back through it and kind of run it all together at one, uh, one going over. You're trying to get it all squeezed together. Now, I've probably got too much tension in it right now. We'll pop that up and you'll probably see a lot of light underneath my uh, my straight edge there. And that's because I've been trying to get some lumps out of it, get it in there. And if I have to take tension out, you can run your tensioner up here or add some back to it. And that'll bring it back to a little bit more uniform. Yeah, because I'm expecting to have yeah, there's a lot more light than I would like to have coming through there. But I had to get it, some lumps drawn out and get that tension in, knowing that I could take it back out of there if need be. Now, I know I'm low on back. So we'll just give it some of this. Maybe it's either some hammering yet. Again, we'll take our straight edge. Again, it's easier when the lights are off, but for today's purposes, that's not bad. Another thing that we can try and look for is you'll also get bends in it this way. And you take your straight edge and check for it this way.
But again, I'm also not done rolling with either, so. Still a work in progress. Sometimes you can tell where it's at. There's a hollow sounding area. Bubble's gone. It could take me eight hours sometimes if they come in real bad shape and I've got a lot of work to do on the teeth, but usually it's not an all day event for one blade. Just when you got the problem. This blade's been a little tricky, but I've been rushed at times to keep the place running. So I've taken a few shortcuts here and there maybe, but today we're making up for it. Just a couple of short little quick rolls. 